Hey, what's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with the second iteration of our Ask Me Anything podcast episode edition, where we're going to just answer any of your questions, any questions that you have related to growing your business, getting more referrals, getting more repeat business, mining the gold from your database, attracting top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, having more fun, flow, and fulfillment earning more while working less, anything related to growing your business and creating the career of your dreams and being able to step into more fulfillment on the journey. That's what we're going to talk about today. So there's no such thing as a dumb question, silly question, unless it's really dumb, then I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> but all kidding aside, this is uh, your opportunity to just hit me up with any questions you might have. I don't do any private consulting on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but if I did, I'd charge at least two G's per hour for private consulting. So this is kind of a, your best next opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me. And it's all free. Just ask your question by popping it in the comments section, wherever you're watching the stream, and I'll see your questions come through in my fancy dancy little StreamYard dashboard here, and I will answer your questions. So hit me up with any question you might have. What's your single most important question as it relates to growing your business and taking your mortgage business to the next level? Go ahead and pop it in the comments. I will see it, and I will answer your question right here, right now. Why am I doing this? Because I want to help you guys take your life, your business, your trajectory to a whole other level. I'm here to serve. Now, there will be an opportunity at the end of our time together today to learn more about what I can do as it relates to really pouring gasoline in the fire with our uh, proven program systems, campaigns, marketing support, elite level, world-class, first-class marketing support and coaching. Uh, but that's not the objective here. The objective here is just to lead with value, to give you results in advance, to uh, to be light in the darkness, so to speak, to be a beacon of light for you and to just serve you because it is a blessing and a delight to serve you. So if you're down for that, pop your questions in, in the comment section, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Keep them related to mortgage marketing in some respect, okay? I'm a mortgage marketing coach, so please do keep it related to marketing and growing your mortgage business. All right, so that being said, let's dive in, shall we? Get your questions in, because this is my opportunity to serve you, but you need to help me help you by getting your questions in the queue. Hey, and that rhymes too. <laughs> don't mind if I do. All right, so let's get into it and do it. Uh, let's see, the first question we have in the queue here is what unique value do I offer to get top realtors to get them to want to work with me? Great question. What unique value do I offer to get top realtors to want to work with me? So the first thing to remind yourself is that the reason they're going to want to work with you is not just because of your unique value, but because of your energy. You can have tons of unique value, tons of innovation, tons of cool tools in your toolbox. But if you got the personality of a rubber boot, we got a problem, right? It doesn't matter how much awesomeness you bring to the table. If you're really socially awkward or you're guarded or you're hard to get to know, or your personality is kind of clunky and awkward and uncomfortable, if you have imposter syndrome or inadequacy syndrome, and you're projecting that into the space, that will repel them. So the most unique value you can ever offer, and I repeat, the most compelling uh, unique value you can ever offer is the best version of yourself, your winner self, your champion self, you animated with a vibration of victory where you're feeling heart connected to purpose to make a difference in someone's life. And you got pep in your step, sparkle in your eye. You're feeling upbeat, positive, optimistic, enthusiastic, passionate. You're abiding in faith, not fear, right? You're having fun. 
and you're just letting yourself be you. You're not trying to be something or someone so you can get referrals. You're just being you. You're being your badass, authentic self and unashamed and unabashedly just showing up and being you because no one else can be you like you. No one else can do you like you. And God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with you. So start to own that to your core and start to live in the energy that you're operating from your champion self. Every time you pick up the phone, every time you connect with these realtors, you want to stand with your shoulders back with a relaxed smile on your face, chest out, and breathe deeply. Breathe from that place of owning your champion self. Put your freaking cape on and own your champion self. Imagine your cape flowing in the wind behind you, right? Own that version of yourself. The reason why they're going to want to work with you is not all the awesome stuff that you bring to the table in terms of tools, arrows in your quiver, campaigns, leads, buyers, sellers, you know, all these great things that you can help them grow their business with. Those are all great. But again, if you're showing up in fear, inadequacy, lack, limitation, scarcity, that's going to repel them faster than you can ever imagine. So that's the most important thing is you owning your champion self, owning your winner's identity, and operating from that vibration of victory. When you show up like a winner, feeling like a winner, talking like a winner, thinking like a winner, emanating from the vibration of victory, you're going to find that that's the absolute most powerful attractant force to attract rock stars because eagles want to soar with eagles. Champions want to roll with champions. Winners want to roll with winners. So water always seeks its own level. It's kind of like in the dating world. Not that I've been in the dating world uh, anytime recently. I I'm just about to celebrate 19 years with my beautiful bride. Someone needs to hook that woman up with a sucker for punishment plaque. She deserves it. 19 years, right? So she is definitely a saint and she's put up with a lot of bullshit from me for 19 years. So I am beyond blessed to have her in my corner and to have her to be my best friend, my soulmate, my confidant, my helpmate. And so when you're in the dating world, if you want to attract a 10, you got to be a 10. Water seeks its own level. You know, everyone wants to attract a 10. The question is, are you ready to show up and be a 10? Are you ready to show up and be that champion, be that winner, be that best version of yourself, be that catch, right? Not just to get the catch, but be the catch. And that's really is the catch is to be the person you want to attract. It's a lot easier to just, you know, go and get a bunch of shit leads off Facebook and think that that's the secret sauce. That's not the secret sauce. The secret sauce is being the best version of yourself. The secret sauce is not, not having a bunch of pre-approved buyers. It's not having uh, a bunch of motivated sellers. All that's great. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, having the cookie in that respect is huge. That's a power position. But if you're showing up with stinking thinking, if you got mind trash that's stealing your joy, your peace, your power, that's going to show up in the space and it's going to repel the right people. So you got to show up being the right person. That's why it's so important to take out the mind trash and to get your beliefs, your thoughts, your emotions aligned with your champion self. Because when you are aligned with your champion self, you feel powerful, you feel resourceful, you feel spontaneous, you feel joyful, you feel peace, you feel poised, you feel power, right? And that is such a magnetic force. It just attracts the right people to you. And so when you're thinking and you're sourcing from beliefs that are in alignment with your victory, with your champion life and your champion self, you're going to find that everything falls in alignment. But if you have weeds in your garden, they're going to take your garden if you don't impeach the weeds, if you don't pull those weeds out. The weeds of inadequacy, inadequacy and imposter syndrome, like I used to think, you know, I'm not smart enough. I'm too young. I'm too, you know, inexperienced. I'm not good looking enough. My ears are too big. My head's too long. My nose is too long. Uh, I'm not charismatic enough. I don't tell a good enough joke. I'm not funny enough, blah, blah, blah. Notice all that bullshit that I had bumping around in my head and notice how that does not serve me to me showing up and serving you. It doesn't serve anybody. It only serves the stinking thinking that keeps me playing safe, playing small, and really not being all that God called me to be. 
And so I had to really do a mindset enema and just flush that bullshit out. And in the place of pulling that weed out in my garden, the weed of the lie that I'm not enough, that I'm not good enough, imposter syndrome, I needed to replace that lie with the seed of truth that I'm made by greatness and for greatness. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, knit in my mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose, and that God's got me. And, you know, there's just that beautiful knowing that if God is for me, who could be against me? And just owning the fact that, you know, God loves variety. He loves tall. He loves short. He loves wide. He loves thin. He loves big. He loves small. He loves all the colors and all the shapes. Who am I to say that the version God made in me is wrong? What if it's exactly what I need to be to be the unique me that I'm called to be to fulfill the unique calling and the unique God calling that God has on my life? And so once I started to flush out that BS, now I can really be of unique value. You're probably thinking, Dorn, what does this have anything to do with unique value to my realtors? It has everything to do with unique value to your realtors because it's a relationship business. And if you're tripping over your sense of inadequacy, I guarantee you that's going to be project projected in the space. And your fear is going to stimulate their fear. They're already freaked out enough. They're already dealing with enough challenges. They're already dealing with enough drama and trauma in their own life. They don't need your drama and trauma. They don't need your fear. They don't need your projected of inadequacy or scarcity. They've already got enough of that shit as their own. They don't need yours. They need you to show up and shine in grace, in love, in joy, in peace, in delight, in positivity, in passion, in you just really savoring the journey and loving the journey, not just trying to get something, not just trying to get a referral, not just trying to get a partner so you can get to your goals. No, really connect, be present with these people, really care. That's the secret sauce. Now, once you own that, then you can get into all the other cool tools that we bring to the table at, on Planet Prosper, like how, helping them dominate on Google with five-star reviews so they become the only logical choice. So they start generating the most high-quality, hot-for-what-you-got prospects they can ever get online who are pre-sold and pre predisposed to buy and do business with you before they even talk to you, right? Or maybe they're doing open houses, but they're not following up with those leads optimally. Maybe they're not using text messaging. Maybe they're using a really stiff, dry, dull kind of uh, method of following up. It's very stiff. It's way too professional. It doesn't really connect. It's very clunky. It's, it doesn't project a pleasing personality. It's too stiff, right? So maybe there's something you need to bring there to help them massage and make it more heart connected, make it more relational. Maybe use text message if they're only using email. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to skin the cat, cat here, friends, to help them. Maybe they're not following up with their database. Maybe they're not doing direct mail. Maybe they're not doing an annual uh, you know, home anniversary call. Maybe they're not doing birthday campaign. Maybe they're uh, not using text message to follow up with their dead leads. There's so many different aspects to this that you want to be cognizant of. So what we teach here on Planet Prosper is how to connect with the human being and lead with the heart, not the head. Because people are going to work with you, not because of all the logical reasons why you're so awesome, because they feel heart connected to you because there's a real genuine relationship there's a, that's established. It's because of the way you make them feel when, you're in, when they're in your energy orbit. They won't necessarily remember what you say, but they'll remember how you make them feel. And that's because what you're sourcing is the energy that charges their battery. It doesn't drain their battery. It charges their battery. That's why they're going to want to work with you. Now, some people, they may not make a switch overnight. You may need to lead by example and lead with value for the first week, the first month, the first two months before they come to realize there's levels to the shiznit and they've been settling for good and they're ready to step up to great by virtue of kicking their current lender to the curb so they can work with you full time to send all their business all the time. But notice it's about your energy. It's about your beingness. It's about your presence. All of that is absolutely mission critical to create the magic of synergy, chemistry, to have real connection, to have them, you know, really open up. And that's how you gain mind share, heart share, and eventually referral share.
So I hope that answers your question. Great, great question. We've got a couple other questions in the queue here. So let's see what else we got here. So the next question, by the way, if you're watching this live, get your questions in by just commenting in the stream and I will see your questions and I will answer them one by one. So this is your opportunity to milk me for all I'm worth live on this live Facebook live. If you're watching this in recorded fashion, well, make sure you get plugged into my Art of Mortgage Marketing Facebook group or my Mortgage Marketing uh, Coach business page where we stream these live on a regular basis and you can join live and answer my questions or rather pose your questions and have me answer them for you. All right, so the next question is this. How do I overcome call reluctance? What a great question. How do I overcome call reluctance? Well, frankly, you never fully overcome it. There's probably some degree of it that still has you feel a little nervous, right? Because then you realize, oh, I'm poised to make an impact. Oh, what I'm doing is meaningful and important. So it's kind of like if you've ever done public speaking, you get that you know butterfly feeling right before you get on stage. Why? Not because you're about to shit bricks, not because you're freaked out, but because you're excited. You're ready to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, crush it, and make an impact. So you just want to frame it as, oh, it's not call reluctance I have. It's just that I'm bumping up against my, my dream and my comfort zone are colliding. That's normal. Just expect that. You're never necessarily going to have that go away. What you do is you make friends with it. You know, So it's kind of like... Uh, spiritual Aikido, if you will. Aikido is a, um, a mixed martial arts form. It's a martial arts form that has you use someone else's energy against them, where they try and push you down and you shift, you, you shift your hips and you use that energy to throw them down instead. So, and same thing with judo. So Aikido is based on the principle that and there's a energy that's working against you, but that energy can also be used for you and to your advantage. And so in this case, you just remind yourself, the reason I don't feel like doing it is because it's the single most important, most profitable activity in my business, which is reaching out and booking appointments with top producing agents. And because it's so important, you know, the current of average wants to take me out. The current of average wants me to make excuses. The current of average wants me to say minana. I'll do it tomorrow. The current of average want me, wants me to check my emails. And uh, if I don't have emails in my inbox, to check my spam filter. And to say yes to all a matter of distractions and derailments. The text messages, the Facebook messenger, or whatever direct message apps you might have. So we say yes to all these distractions because deep down, uh, there's a part of us that's like an inner child that wants to be protected. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of people saying no. We're afraid of you know having people say no because we feel like that means that we're not good enough. And so that scares that inner part, of, you know, our inner child. Because frankly, from a very young age, we've been in many cases put in this box where you need to measure up in order to be loved and accepted. And if you do something wrong, then you're going to be in the doghouse. Then you're going to you know, be grounded. Then you're going to be shunned. Then there's going to be all the shame and guilt. So we learn as kids that it's not safe to make mistakes. It's not safe to do uh, you know, to, to make blunders or to, uh, have, uh, judgment calls that are erroneous or, you know, to do something that does not meet approval in other people's eyes. It's not safe. We learn it's not safe. So we're constantly trying to get yeses. We're yesaholics. And we're so afraid of people not liking us that we live our whole freaking lives in obligation. And then we feel this internal tug of war where on one side, we're really wanting to voice our true self and be assertive. But on the other side, we're scared shitless of uh, letting people down and, and having people uh, think that, you know, we're selfish or that we're, you know, all just about ourselves. And so we collapse the no as that means we're selfish. We collapse the no. And that means that, you know, we're not going to, make people happy. And we need to make people happy because that's the only way to make it in life. You have to make people happy. And that's just not the case. What you need to do, if you're asked, if you just coming from my experience, I can't speak for you, but from my experience, I can't make everyone happy. That's the surest pathway 
to failure is trying to make everyone happy because you're never going to make everyone happy. What we want to do is get clear on what we want to create and start to make choices that allow us to create what we want, not out of obligation and resentment. Because by the way, when we say yes out of obligation, what follows usually is resentment. You may have noticed. So instead of taking that path, which is a rather fruitless and unfulfilling path based on my experience, chances are you feel the same way. If you've ever been down that path, you know it's it's not a happy place, obligation and resentment. And resentment. That's not a happy place. So what's the alternative? Choose what you want in advance. What do you want to create? So for example, you might say, what I want to create, I want a thriving business where I'm doing 10 plus deals a month. I'm working with seven to 10 rock star realtors. They love and adore me. I love and adore them. They're cool cats. They're fun. They're creative. Uh, they're heart connected. They're humble. They're hardworking, but they're not hardworking where they're like a slave to the business. They really value other things like relationships and fun and hanging out and you know, creating magic in the moment, not just always business all the time. So for me, that's that's my ideal partner. Your ideal partner might be different. That's the profile of my ideal partner. So notice what I'm doing now. I'm getting I'm getting clarity. Clarity is power. So that's what I want to create. And now the picking up the phone to call is a way to make those connections. So now I can start to affirm more and more I'm attracting rock star realtors who are heart connected, who are humble, who love and adore me and I love and adore them. They're sending me all their business all the time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. More and more, I'm attracting the right realtors and repelling the wrong ones. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So notice what I'm doing. I'm getting connected to what I want and I'm affirming it as if I already have it. That's going to get you in an energy of excitement versus call reluctance, right? You may already be feeling that. And then now you start to imagine connecting with these cool cats and you start to get in the energy of being the cool cat yourself because you can't attract that which you are not, right? If you're not the cool cat, you're not going to attract the cool cat. You need to step into your cool cat energy and live in that energy and you're going to start to attract those cool cats by virtue of being really congruent and aligned and coherent with that cool cat nature in yourself. And so coming back to the principle we talked about earlier, the water always seeks its own level. And likewise, the champion must want and not just want to attract champions, but must live in that champion nature themselves to attract other champion partners. We need to live from that energy first. So call reluctance is based on projecting an image of being rejected. In my world, there is no rejection. They just rejected the opportunity. You know what that means? They just disqualified themselves so I didn't have to. How great is that? That just saved me some time. It's not rejection. They didn't reject me. They rejected the opportunity because they're not the right fit. They, in essence, disqualified themselves so I didn't have to. So how beautiful and efficient is that? But notice the energy that comes from framing it as they just rejected the opportunity. They didn't reject me. They just, they're not ready for my gift yet. Notice the difference in that feeling versus they rejected me. That I, there must be something in me that's not good enough. That I'm not good enough. That, you know, all I'm doing is going through the meat grinder every day, taking these calls because all I'm getting is no's. I don't know about you. I don't like feeling that rejection feeling. And I don't like the feeling of feeling like I got doors slammed in my face. But if you frame it like that, you're going to have the feeling like that. Emotion always follows meaning. So if you make it mean that you got rejected, you're going to feel rejected. If you make it mean they're not ready for your gift yet, or they just disqualified themselves, then it's just like some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting, right? It's just, you just sifting and sorting. You're sifting through the red apples or rather the the uh you're you got a big bucket of apples and you got some red apples you got some green apples you got some rotten apples you're sifting through the apples you're picking out the rotten apples throwing them in the trash you're not spending any time with those those are the ones that say f off you know you know they're just like really arrogant 
They're the prima donnas and they're vitriolic in how they respond to you. So like, let's just get rid of those. We're not going to sniff that rotten apple. We're not going to poke that rotten apple. We're not going to mess with that rotten apple. We're just going to leave that rotten apple alone. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Some people's like, well, what's up with that person? Their fangs come out and it's like, whoa, I'm just coming here to serve. And you're bringing that um, next, right? You just disqualified yourself, but you bless them and release them. You don't name call them. You don't have to off them back. You just bless them and release them, you know, and it's just nothing but love, but you're not going to let that in your space. Next, some will, some won't. So what next? Someone's waiting. But again, notice I'm in control. I'm in the driver's seat. I get to choose who I give my gift to. And if they're not ready for my gift, no big deal. A no just means next opportunity. Next, someone's waiting. So you need to condition that in your nervous system that a no is just they're not ready for your gift. A no is next, someone's waiting. Or a no is, hey, they just don't know what they don't know. They need to have you show up and bring your light. They need to have you show up and bring your confidence. They need to have you show up and bring your caring. And so sometimes a no by text, for example, means you need to pick up the phone and call them because if they felt your energy and your certainty and your confidence over the phone, they'd their resistance would buckle like cheap lawn furniture and they would embrace your overture because they feel your heart, your certainty, your confidence. And it's almost impossible to say no to that, right? It's just so irresistible. So sometimes a no, for example, by text or email is, hey, this person just needs to feel my heat over the phone. They need to feel my light over the phone. So that's precisely why you call them versus a reason why you don't. Notice the difference. Again, emotion follows meaning and emotion drives action and action drives results. So you need to get the right meaning to drive the right emotion, to drive the right action, to get the right results. It all starts from the meaning you're bringing to things. So hopefully that helps there. Again, if you guys have any questions and you're watching the stream live, just comment in the comment section and I will see your question and I'll be happy to answer your question. So let's see what else we got here. Another question. How do I consistently grow my pipeline? That's a really common question, right? People ask, how do I build consistency? Doran, I'm up and down like a yo-yo, up one month, down the next. You know, I'll have one or two good months and I'll have some slow months. And it feels like I'm constantly in this feast or famine roller coaster ride from hell. How do I get outside of this? How do I get past this? How do I grow my business consistently and have my income be predictable and consistent and up and to the right? Perhaps you can relate to that. And if you can, you want to tune in and uh, make sure you take some good notes. So inconsistency in your pipeline, let's just get real. We're in a cause and effect universe. Inconsistency in your pipeline is the effect. Inconsistency in your prospecting is the cause. It's as simple as that. If you're inconsistent with your prospecting, you will be inconsistent with your pipeline and your profits. It's literally that simple. Now, it doesn't make it easy necessarily to fix that, but it's simple. If you're inconsistent with your prospecting and you do it when you get around to it, you get it, do it when you're in the mood. You do it when you feel especially inspired. You do it when, you know, all the stars align, which is maybe once a week or something like that. You're going to have inconsistent uh, pipeline flow because you don't have consistent activities that bring new opportunities onto the table to fill your pipeline. So that's, it's kind of like, if you want to be fit, you can't get fit just by going to the gym once a week. You got to be fit by going to the gym at least three times a week, right? You got to exercise at least three times a week to build any momentum. And unfortunately, most people come to this business thinking that you're the exception to the rule and you can get fit and be kicking ass, taking names, chewing bubble gum and crushing it just by prospecting for you know an hour or two or three or four or five a week. If you think you're gonna grow your business and make upper echelon surgeon money by only prospecting three to five hours a week, you got another thing coming, especially considering your version of prospecting is activity, it's not usually productivity. Now I'm gonna start rattling some cages. I'm calling it tight here, guys. Most of you, your prospecting time is shit when it comes to productivity because there's a big difference between activity and productivity. I don't see, say that to piss you off, but to really rattle your cage and get you to realize 
that you accepting every text message, every phone call, every email, every outbound overture that comes at you through social media while you're supposed to be doing prospecting time is not prospecting time. That's a, I can't wait to get derailed and distracted time because I don't like prospecting. So I'll pretend I'm prospecting, but in reality, I'm not prospecting because I'll take any opportunity to get distracted during my prospecting time. Am I preaching to someone right now? You got to be knowing you're not the only person. Most of us, we struggle with this. Welcome to being human. Because again, we want to coddle our inner child and we have the hiding places called the urgent and important. Dorn, I need to take this phone call because it's a pipe, it's a deal in the pipeline. Dorn, I need to take this email because it's a deal in the pipeline. Dorn, I need to take this call because it's a realtor and I don't want to lose this realtor. Well, that's precisely why your income is up and down like a yo-yo. Because you're living in fear and you're not realizing that there are times in your business that you do not do that. And I'll speak specifically to when that is. When you're meeting with a client, do you answer the phone? Yes or no? No, you don't. When you're meeting with a client, do you answer email? Yes or no? No, you don't. When you're meeting with a client, do you answer all the uh, overtures that are coming at you through social media? No, you don't. You're present. And if you're not present, you're going to get your ass kicked in this business because they'll just go to someone else who is present because they can feel that from a mile away. Their BS detector will detect that from a mile away. You know it and I know it. So if you can last an hour in a sacred, non-negotiable, present moment power meeting with a client without answering the phone, without taking calls from your realtors and letting them hit voicemail. If you can last for an hour like that when you're meeting with a client, does it not make sense that you can do that for the most important client you could ever have, which is yourself? Think about it. If you can do that with a client, why can't you do that with the most important client you can ever have, which is you, for one hour a day? sacred, non-negotiable prospecting time where you gamify the process. You get fiercely focused. You put the blinders on and you focus on what really matters. 10 outbound calls, three live connections, one appointment. Gamify the process. Now we're, we're shifting from vague generalities to meaningful specifics. Now we're getting fiercely focused because if you'll book one appointment a day, with a relatively successful realtor, and you do that consistently, even if you have the personality of a rubber fricking boot, you're gonna win in this business because you'll meet other realtors who have the personality of a rubber boot and you'll jive and you'll have rubber boot rapport. You'll have rubber boot synergy. You'll have rubber boot chemistry and it'll be sparks flying and magic happening and you'll have a big rubber boot party because that's just how rubber boot personalities roll. It's that synergy that comes with the commonality of being a rubber boot right? Now, all kidding aside, though, it's all a matter of getting those meetings. Now, if you don't want to have to do it the hard way and do straight cold calling, that's where you might want to reach out for help because we have a kick-ass world-class system to get these realtors hot for what you got. We do reconnaissance where we identify the top, uh, the best, most successful realtors in your market, how many transactions they do, how many buyer sides, how many seller sides, whether or not they have a preferred lender. We have all that data at our fingertips. And then we load that list of top producing realtors, not 600, not 300. We're talking just 50 to 100 of them into our realtor attraction campaigns that get some hot for what you got. And then bada bing, bada boom, you're booking appointments with top producing agents like a hot knife through butter. And then all you do is just pick up the phone and get those appointments booked using our words that work and being in that posture of service, that posture of being a true partner, not just a loan leech, coming to give, not just coming to get. And then we teach you how to do those appointments so they're literally eating out of your hand. And so that we flip the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them. How cool would that be, right? And so again, that's shifting the energy so you're in the power position. Now you hold the cookie. And now your hour of power every day is even that much more potently productive because you're letting the cream rise to the top and you're just responding to the responders, those who are hot for what you got. And instead of doing caveman methods from the dark ages using cold calling, you're using 21st century technology to get these realtors receptive, engaged, open, eager to want to meet with you. 
and then you're diagnosing their pain, their challenges, what keeps them up at night, what is causing their marketing engine to lose steam, what, what's the gap between where they are and where they want to be. And then if you discern and decide you can help them and you want to help them, if there's the right synergy and chemistry, then you invite them to another meeting where you show them how to actually fix some of those issues. You prescribe a cure for what ails them. We diagnose first, we prescribe second. And so on Planet Prosper at, coach, at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, we teach you how to do all this. We give you all the systems, all the plug and play campaigns, all the scripts, all the mindset, all the principles, the timeless, immutable principles that allow you to spread your wings and soar. And instead of coming across as commission breath halitosis, feeling like you need them, we're flipping the script so that they feel they need you. And we're changing the dynamic entirely. Can you see how that would make a difference, right? That's how you build a consistent pipeline, by making that a habit and making it something you get to do versus something you have to do. Imagine that. Imagine doing prospecting where you feel like you get to versus you have to. That's how you build your business consistently. That's how you grow consistently. It's have the growth, the hyper growth activities, the 20% activities that produce 80% of your results. You hold those activities as sacred and non-negotiable, and you condition yourself to see them in the proper light. So they feel like a get to, not a have to. Could you imagine that? That the activities that grow your business at the highest level, that you feel that they're get to's, not have to's. You can miss a meal, but you don't miss those because they're that sacred. They're that non-negotiable. They're that inextricably linked with you living your best life, your blessed life a prosperous life, an abundant life with amazing realtors who love and adore you, do love and adore them. They send you all their business all the time. They put you on their speed dial. They make you their exclusive. They're sending you one, two, three deals a month consistently. All these borrowers for the most part are qualified, hot for what you got, pre-sold on you before you even talk to them. Like there's no better way to grow your business than that. And when you're making surgeon money, liberate your spouse money, do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want money, and you're able to do that with a solid stable of, say, seven to 10 rock star realtors that you consider friends, not just partners, there's no better way to grow your business than that. Not to mention being able to mine the gold from your database and maximize repeat and referral business. So if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I need me some of that realtor traction campaign. I need me some of that mojo that you're showing up with that has you speak with so, so much certainty and confidence. I need to get my swagger factor on. I need to activate my mojo. I notice that I'm just not feeling the energy that I want to feel around my prospecting efforts. I notice that I'm inconsistent. I want to be more consistent. I want to feel like it's a get to, not a have to. And I want to build my business in a way that's fun. I don't want to be grinding and white knuckling anymore, Dorn. I want to learn how to work smart instead of just working hard. If that's you, I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call with either myself or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business, shine the light of truth on your situation, just have a real talk, honest conversation. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now in your business, where do you want to take your business? And if we can help you bridge that gap and create an absolute quantum leap breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, Frankly, we'll be the first to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, you will leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity. Chances are we're going to have some fun. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, go ahead and book a call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, book a call. And I uh, look forward to serving you to a real, honest, clarity-evoking conversation. It's not a sales call. It's a clarity call. If we need to sell you on making freedom money, you're not ready to make freedom money. So this is not a sales call. This is a clarity call to see where you're at, where you want to go, and if we can help you. So again, thanks for watching. This is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all.